Okay, we better get started. I'm sure there'll be a few folks coming in, but we better get going from a time standpoint. Let's pray before we start. Lord, we do thank you that you love us, you care about us, and you're always wanting to teach us so that we would grow to be more like Christ. So we pray tonight, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would be here, that you would speak to each heart, that whether in the teaching time or in the small group time, that you would give us understanding and wisdom to help us grow in your character. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Let me mention, first of all, about what's up here. This is the last week of the teaching on relationships and small groups on that part. Next Wednesday, we are doing something off campus at Still Creek. It's the worship arts ministry doing their thing, all their dances and other such things. And uh, we encourage everybody to come, but there won't be anything here. So it's all going to be at Still Creek next week. There won't be anything on the campus here. But starting back the following week on May the 10th through the rest of the month of May, so four weeks in May, there will be things going on here. And uh, it'll be of the format where there'll be someone who teaches, and then you can take what they taught and discuss it in your small groups. Uh, like, and then toward the latter one, there's one we're doing a video, and you'll like it. It's Michael Jr., who is a co Christian comedian. It's the, the video is full of depth. I mean, it's really a good teaching that is something good to discuss, but it will keep you laughing the whole time. So I encourage you to come. It'll be fun. Uh, but anyway, so there are things continuing through the month of May. Once we get into June, we will have two picnics, one here on the campus on a Wednesday and one at Warrior's Path on a Wednesday. We'll do baptisms at Warrior's Path, the one we do there. And then we take the rest of the summer off until August. We start back in August. So just for Wednesday nights, that's sort of the plan. Okay? So this is the last teaching on relationships. And I want to talk about the idea of being a blessing. You see, we've talked about a lot of different facets of relationships and uh, how relationships grow and issues in relationships we talked about authority and things of those nature but i want to talk about that part of our job as a christian in any relationship is to be a blessing to other people that god calls us to be a blessing in every relationship that we have so that's whether it's parent being a blessing to a child or spouse being spouses being blessings to each other that we're called to be a blessing. And so to start with, we'll go to that scripture there in Genesis where the Lord said to Abram, leave your country, your people, your father's household, go to the land I will show you, which I could do a teaching just on that part right there, that he's willing to be obedient to go, and God doesn't even tell him where he's going. He just says, go. And then he says, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. All of the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. Think about that, what God said to this one person. He said, I'm going to make you a great nation. I will bless you. I'll make your name great. You will be a blessing. He says, those who bless you, I will bless. I believe that principle, by the way, still holds true today, that it is wise to be, to be a friend and protector of the nation of Israel. I really believe that. And, um, and then he goes on to say, whoever curses you, I will curse. All the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. So he's saying to Abraham, or Abram at this point, that I'm calling you to be a blessing. I will bless you, and through you, I'm going to bless everybody. And I believe that calling is upon every person who is a Christian. It is true that if you come to know Christ and, and embrace him, you are going to receive blessings during your lifetime. This is the nature of God. He likes to bless his people. It's just who he is and what he does. And likewise, he calls us to be a blessing to others. That it's a very important thing, I think, to bless other people. Now, in the Old Testament days... This idea of blessing was a bit of a formal thing. 
where the, the patriarch, the father of a household, would bless the next generation, particularly the sons. Remember like with Jacob and Esau, where Jacob was wanting to steal the blessing in essence. And so there is this reality that a blessing was very formal there. For us, it is just what God calls us to do. It's interesting. I don't even know when I started doing this or why I started doing this. It just, I just started and it's become regular. But I often will be talking to people, people that I don't even know before that conversation. And I, as I leave, I'll say something like, blessings upon you. And I, even recently, I said that to a person that I didn't know really. And they said, excuse me, sort of like, what'd you say? And I, I said, blessings upon you. And what I mean by that are the Lord's blessings upon you. Sometimes I'm more explicit. Like I've even been known to, when I'm departing, to put my hand on somebody's shoulder and, and say, I pray that the Lord blesses you greatly. And I believe there is something significant about that, being a vessel, an avenue of always blessing other people. And it's just this habit I've gotten into of essentially when I'm departing, I'm praying for a blessing upon that person. And so if we go down through here, I'm not going to spend a tremendous amount of time on some of these, but like the second category I put there is like family blessings. Do you realize when it, it says, wives submit to your husbands, husbands love your wives, and, and it says, children obey your parents, this pleases the Lord, and fathers don't embitter your children. All of those things are saying, bless one another. Be a blessing to one another. And even there in Psalms, it says, sons are a heritage from the Lord, children a reward from him, like arrows in the hand of a, a warrior are sons in one's use. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. That the Lord's blessing is upon this idea of family and so forth. And I think it's very important for those of you who still have children at home to think in terms of blessing them, sending them out in life with a blessing. If you are a latecomer and you would like one of the handouts, the lovely Sandy Toll is now passing them out. And just if you need a handout, raise your hand. Oh, down here. I need one more down here, Sandy. Down. But what I was saying, if you have children at home still, you should think of in terms of as they are maturing, sending them into the world with your blessing. Do you realize what a powerful thing that is for a young person to embrace their journey in life with the blessing of their parents. That their parents are encouraging them and blessing them in terms of moving forward. And do you realize how many young people do not have that? I mean, they, they don't have a family background where they're sent out with a blessing. They're essentially launched with, with a, a lot of baggage and so if you're, you still have children at home, you need to think in terms of, of casting on a blessing to each one of those persons. There was a book written quite a number of years ago. I want to say it was Gary Smalley who wrote it, but I might have the wrong author there. It was just entitled The Blessing. Anybody remember that book? Anybody remember who the author was? I don't, I don't believe it was Gary Smalley, the more I think about it, but, but it, it, it's probably still in print, but it, it's, it was a long time ago it was written, but it had some great principles in it about being a blessing to others. Now, notice there I put third, the part about work. It says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working to the Lord, not for men, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. And I believe that God calls us with gift, different gifts and talents into the role of serving people in our work. And that is to be a way of blessing others. Whatever role you are called to. In fact, I was having a conversation today with a, a gentleman. And one of the things we've tried to do as a church here, and I think we've done fairly well, is to debunk the idea that there are some people in ministry and the rest of us who watch. All of us are in ministry. If you are a Christian, you are in ministry. 
It's just your ministry looks different from the next person. Whatever gifts and talents you have, wherever God calls you in life, those are your places of ministry. It's, there's not some separation from those who are in ministry and the lay people. We're all in ministry because the New Testament talks about the priesthood of all believers. You're all called into that role. And so one of the things we need to do is look at our work as an opportunity to serve and bless others. It's like, I mentioned this on the weekend, maybe some of you heard this, I don't think I said it in all the services, but there's this guy who I know who has a septic tank cleaning service. Remember me talking about this on the weekend? He's a Christian, he's got crosses on the side of his, of his tanker truck where he pumps out septic tanks. He's been doing this for years, I've seen him around for years doing it. He was doing it across the street at my neighbor's house not long ago. Over there pumping out the septic tank. He's got on his waders and, you know, it's not a job I'd want. But he's a Christian and God undoubtedly has called him to be a servant in this regard. And look, if you don't have septic tank problems, you don't understand this. But if you've ever had septic tank problems, that guy can bless you greatly. <laughs> I am not kidding. He can save you thousands of dollars, too, if he, you let him come every few years instead of waiting until it's a giant problem in your backyard. And so, see, even there, he has a ministry of service. I bet if he did a spiritual gifts test, his primary gift is the gift of service or help. And you see, will there be a reward for that? Mm-hmm. Then I put here the blessing of generosity. God loves a cheerful giver. Like in the Proverbs, it says, A generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will refresh himself be refreshed. A generous man will himself be blessed, for he shares his food with the poor. In other words, a generous person is blessing others. And there's something very good about that. There is a way of blessing. In fact, were you here on the weekend a couple weeks ago where I, I said that I missed the prompting of the Spirit and I didn't pay for this young lady's food at, at Taco Bell? I missed it. All right. Fortunately, this is last night. I wasn't at Taco Bell. Okay? I moved up a notch. I was at Dairy Queen. All right? <laughs> because my daughter wanted to stop at Dairy Queen. So we were in Dairy Queen in Abingdon. And uh, we're in line. We're going to order something. And up behind us walks a young lady who... She might have still been in high school, or she might have been, let's say, 19, 20, a little bit out of high school. And what appeared to be her younger brother, who was about, I'm going to say he was 12, okay? And they're behind us. And I realized they're looking at the menu and stuff, and, and I got the idea to pay for their stuff. So I turned around. The, the, the person asked me, said, are you finished with your order? I said, no, I'm going to get theirs. And the, the girl was like, no, no, we, we got money, it's ours. And, you know. and my, fortunately, my daughter was with me, so they didn't think I was a creepy old man, right? <laughs> and I said, I just like to bless people. And my daughter said something like, yeah, it's fine, that's what he wants to do. And they're like, well, okay. So they let me buy, they just wanted milkshakes, they let me buy their milkshakes. But you, there was a joy in doing that. And then when I'm walking out, the young boy, he's, he stopped and said, thank you, thank you. You know, there's, you bless others, and there's something good about it. And see, every one of us, wherever we go in life, should be looking for opportunities to bless other people. Do you know what I do now? This is not a giant blessing to anybody, but I have a habit. I've done this for years. I've even got my kids to do it. You know all those stray carts that you leave in the parking lot at Walmart? Every time I walk in, I look for one and take it in. You know where people leave them all over the place? Maybe not you. You know, when I said that, I thought a lot of you would laugh, but nobody laughs. So <laughs> that means you're all guilty, I guess. I don't know. But I just, I just do that. Now, the reason I do it is to bless the people who work there. Because they have to go out there late at night, in the rain, whatever it is, collect that stuff. And so I just try a little bit. Find the stray ones, take them back, just to help them out a little bit. See, look for a place to bless people wherever you go. Or, you know, I, I've tried to teach my kids the philosophy of leave the place better than it was before you got it. 
or if you borrow something from somebody, take it back in better condition than it was when you borrowed it. This is true. Years ago, I borrowed one of those little trailers, you know, little two-wheel trailers that you, and to haul a lawnmower or something. I don't know what I was doing. I borrowed it from this guy. The thing was really rusty. You know what I did before I took it back to him? I painted it. I think he was flat out shocked. His, his old rusty trailer came, and it was really badly rusty. His old rusty trailer came back looking really good. And see, I was just wanting to bless him for blessing me. And it didn't take long. I just got spray paint, spray it, you know, put some primer on it, I guess, and then sprayed it. It, wa- it wasn't a big deal. But see, look for opportunities to be a blessing to people all the time. And now this part about being generous, I do believe the principle is that you cannot outgive God. I think that's true. And some of you probably are already very generous people. Some of you probably struggle in this area. Do you know, if you are a person who struggles in this area, all God wants you to do is to take another step. Just take a chance. Like if you see me in line at Taco Bell, pay for my meal. <laughs> oh, this happened. This happened just recently. I went to eat at uh, a place up there on 394. I think it's called Giovanni's. Is that right? Somebody knows it's up there? It's a pretty, they have good food. And um, so I ate in there and so happened there was a person that we knew who was in there. My wife and I were there. And we, we talked to that person, so forth, so on. Then we had our, had our meal. That person left long before we did. Get this. We went up to pay at the counter, and there's this guy in front of me that I don't know, right? And he takes care of business. He walks out the door, and then I walk up to pay mine. I give him the check, and the young lady says, yours is paid for. And so I naturally thought, that guy, who who was he? I don't know why he would have paid for my meal. Well, then it, it dawned on me, wait a minute, it wasn't him. It was the lady that we had talked to a half hour earlier. She had made some kind of arrangement with them to pay for our meal before we left. You know, that was a tremendous blessing. I really appreciated her doing that. This is what I mean. But everywhere you go, you can be a generous person. Just choose to bless people. Now, the more you have been blessed, the more you should look for blessings. You know what's interesting, though, from a statistical standpoint, according to the IRS, as, give, as income goes up, the percentage given away goes down. In other words, people think, you know, when I get a lot of income someday, I'm just going to be so generous. If you're not generous now, you won't be generous then. Because if you're not generous when you can say, I can give away $100, giving away $1,000 is going to make you choke. You know, because you're talking about bigger things. Can I do that? I don't know. Is it? And see, you have to learn to be generous where you are. You can start out with Taco Bell generosity. And then you can move up to the chop house. You know, just. But now, this is part of being a blessing. Then notice the one down here about blessing even our enemies. Out of 1 Peter it says, it says, finally, all of you live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic, love us, brothers. Be compassionate and humble. It says, do not repay evil for evil or insult with insult, but with blessing. Because this, you were, to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. Now think about that. It says, do not repay people evil for evil, insult for insult. In other words, don't repay them what they deserve Instead, with a blessing. Because this, by this, you may inherit a blessing. Now, probably some of you have someone that has not treated you well, has spoken harshly of you, has done something that's not so good. And your natural inclination might be just to avoid them or something. And if your sinful nature is operating, maybe you have some other thoughts, things you'd like to do, like run over their car or you know, something like that. But it says here, 
to return to them a blessing. Have you ever thought about how, if there's somebody that is a difficult person in your life, how you could go about blessing them? Rather than responding in kind, so to speak. And you realize that responding with a blessing can diffuse a lot of problems. It's like uh, the scripture that says a kind word turns away wrath or a gentle word turns away wrath. And boy, is that true. If you get somebody who is angry at you and you respond to them with anger, what's going to happen? It will escalate. The anger just keeps boiling and getting more intense between the two of you. If somebody responds to you with anger and you respond with a gentle and kind word, it is amazing how it can diffuse the problem. I've had that happen. I've seen it happen. And you see, it's the wise person who responds with a blessing wherever possible. Now notice too here, the last one, where I said a legacy of blessings. It says, the memory of the righteous will be a blessing, but the name of the wicked will rot. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children, that is for his grandchildren, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. That is for somebody else. The principle there is that even after you pass, you can leave great blessings to people. Now, I don't mean just financial blessings. Some people leave blessings to their children's children and inheritance to their children's children that is abundant it's enormous but it's not necessarily financial i mean that's what you might first think of when you think of that but you see there's some people who invest so greatly in the next generation and the following generation that they leave a great inheritance one of the things that's been a blessing in my life is um uh, first meeting and marrying my wife, but then how her family has been a blessing over the years. Now, I've talked about this some on the weekends. Her dad was not a Christian when we met. He didn't become a Christian until we'd been married for a few years. And so the first few years, there was some tension there. Uh, it was challenging at times. But once he became a Christian, he changed more than just about anybody I've ever seen. He went from being sort of a cold-hearted, tough guy to being a big baby. I mean, he cries a lot, and it's nice. But once he became a Christian, over the years, our relationship has just become so good with, with them and the extended family. And the blessings have been wonderful. And one of the things that I've been able to do with my own children as they're growing up, particularly here, say, in the teen years, things like that, is not only talk about how my wife and I see things, but also talk about like how her parents see things from a Christian standpoint. And you see, their godly witness to my children is an inheritance that they are passing on, a blessing that they are passing on. And my kids see it. They realize it. Likewise, my mother's a Christian too, and they, they see her, how she treats people. She like, she's a very generous person. She likes to help people. She's 84, soon to be 85, and she spends a lot of her time helping other people. And um, so my kids, you see, see how they are that this Christian thing is real in their life, and there's a legacy that they're leaving. And see, that goes on. It might even go on beyond generations that can even know who you are. In other words, like this was done with, uh, it was Jonathan Edwards. Uh, you know, he was a part of the, the Great Awakening in, in the United States, and he himself then later became the president at, at Princeton University when Princeton was still a Christian school, which today it's pretty secular. 
And there was this study, some of you have probably seen this, of his legacy of his descendants and, and the enormous blessings that have come from his descendants, the things that were accomplished in his family. Like there are several that were senators and, and congressmen. There's some that were lawyers and doctors, and university presidents. Just amazing the legacy that has come from that man. A very godly person who God used in his own generation, but then passed on a legacy, a blessing to the next generations. And, you know, the scripture that says the sins of the fathers be cast to the third and the fourth generation. I think once you've reached a little later in life, you get an idea of how easy that is, do you not? That it may seem like four generations ago was a long time and it's very removed from you, but I see how easy that is to be passed on to subsequent generations. I think of it like this. I, my great-great-grandfather, that'd be four generations removed, was in the Civil War. Okay? Sounds like, boy, that was a long time ago. But my grandmother, who I knew well, knew him well. You think of it in those terms, that's not very far removed. In other words, how easy would it have been for him to pass on a blessing or the opposite of that to his grandchildren, which would include my grandmother, and then how easy would that have been for her to pass on to my generation? And see, we think of those time periods as really far apart, but your, the blessing that you are putting in your own immediate family can carry for many generations to come. And see, I'm going to repeat this because I like seeing these people in here, got these little kids walking around, and I see others back there. If you have children in your home, you need to think very poignantly about blessing them and sending them out into life's journey with your blessing. How many people in this room would say that you entered early adult life knowing that you had the blessing of your parents. How many of you would say yes to that? And then maybe that, that's a little more than half. That was, that's better than I expected. Now, for a lot of you, it may not have been that your parents didn't want to bless you. It may well have been that they had their own struggles. They didn't even know they were trying to bless you in some way. But, see, you can be really intentional about that. And you can be specific about it. Like, I've, I've mentioned this before on the weekends too, the grandmother that I was just referring to, her husband died when she was 42, I think. Never remarried, lived to be 88. Spent all of her years as a, a public school teacher, taught first grade mostly. Uh, retired from that. When her husband died, he had a little business. She ran that for the rest of her life. Like, she, when she finished teaching school, she went and opened his business, ran it in the evenings. And then when she retired, she ran it full time. She was one of those sweet little old ladies who saved her money and, and did pretty well financially. She helped pay for my sister and I to go to college and to graduate school. None of us had any debt when we graduated. Now, you see, she blessed us greatly in that regard. And she didn't have to. She had her own struggles in life. She was a sweet person. She cared a lot about the subsequent generations and wanted to bless. And see, because she'd been an educator, education was really important to her, so she wanted to pay. That's what I mean by... You can think about being a blessing in a lot of different ways. Do you know what else you can do? You can choose to be a blessing to somebody who doesn't have it from any other source. Like, let's say you got kids in high school and they know somebody who their, their situation in their home is really bad that person doesn't have anybody to bless them. You can choose to be a blessing to that person. 
I knew of a situation some years ago of a young lady that, from my perspective, I saw her being rejected in, in her social setting and in her family. And I became very intentional about trying to bless her and, and show her that she was accepted. And she became sort of a part of our family. And I see good things in her life now. She's a young adult now. And I see her having made good decisions, going in a good direction. I don't know how much influence we had on her. But we tried to intentionally be a blessing to her. I'll give you another example, and then I have to stop. I was listening to Family Life today or Focus on the Family. I listen to it all the time. If you don't, you should. A lot of wisdom will be learned there. If you are a parent, you should listen to them 24-7, okay? But I was listening to one of those programs recently, and um, uh, they were talking about that in this school, they had a daddy-daughter dance kind of thing. And it might have been a private Christian school. I can't remember. But anyway, everybody's young ladies who had a dad would go to the daddy-daughter festival, whatever it was. Well, there was a young girl in uh, a classmate of young, one of the young girls whose father had died. And this young girl knew that the other girl was not looking forward to the time of the daddy-daughter thing. It was going to be painful and difficult. So this young girl went to her father and said, can we have a threesome on our daddy-daughter date for the dance or whatever, the, whatever they called it? Can, instead of it just being you, dad, and daughter, can we take her with us? And the dad was saying, he's the one telling the story, he said, you know, when she first said that, I was a little hesitant because I thought this is a very special time just for us. And, and he's like, I don't know about that. I don't know if that's a good idea. But then he said he really thought about it and prayed about it and said, yeah, if she has a heart to bless this other young girl, then he wanted to do it. He said something like, if it's okay with her parents. So they called to talk to the mom. And uh, said the mom just broke down in tears because she was so upset that her daughter was going to have to face this time without a father. And here's this, this man who's willing to take her. See, that's, that's being a blessing to somebody. I got to tell you one more story. I said that was the last one, but I'm sorry. I'm wound up. Okay? One more, then we'll stop. Our, our son goes to Milligan. And... Um, Last year, when he was a freshman, one of, he had two friends whose fathers died while they were in school. One a young lady from Texas and one a young man from Ohio. And in both cases, we have tried to help however we could. And it turns out with the young lady, we've been able to be most helpful. She's actually come and stayed in our home several times. Like during a break, instead of going home to Texas, she would stay with us like at Thanksgiving or something like that. And um, it's been a clear opportunity to step in and try to serve in the role of blessing for someone who really needed it. And see, this is what I'm saying. If, if you are aware, just your eyes are open, you're aware of what's going on around you, there are opportunities to be a blessing to other people. They are around you. And some of us just need to be more intentional about it. Look for, how can I do, what can I do to be a blessing to somebody else? And I'll say one last thing. The third last thing. <laughs> I think this is, comes from the traditional church. Uh, people want to try to bless me because I'm the pastor. I would far rather you bless somebody else. I think in the traditional church, it's more of um, something you do. Do that for somebody else. Uh, find somebody to bless. I must stop now. Yea, though I do not want to.
Okay, what must you do now? Scurry with all haste unto your small group. Scurry with all haste unto your small group. I'm in a King James mood. 